All right, it's time for another fun shop project. This one's generated because we just got back from a really cool vacation where we had a chance to link up with our pals, the McCluskeys, and uh, had all the dudes with us down at our place in Florida. And uh, I was thinking about all the various different knives that I made for all my, my pals and my son and Richie and Walker and all those guys. And I thought, you know, Brian being just a crazy avid fisherman, we need to make Brian his own fish fillet knife. So with that in mind, uh, I bought a fillet knife blank, stainless steel, super, super sharp, flexible. And we're gonna make the handle out of this. We're gonna use black walnut and white maple. Uh, the handle will have some of these little brass rods that go all the way through the tang. They'll go through all the way through those holes. It'll all be glued up with G-Flex epoxy. And uh, when I'm done, it should look like a nice cool fillet knife and we'll make a nifty little leather sheath for it as well. So that's what's on store for us right now. Let's get started. So job number one, before we do anything else, we wanna tape up this blade so we don't scratch it all up and <laughs> we don't scratch ourselves all up. There, and if you leave that just sticking a little bit above that edge, and it's a lot less likely to cut through there. So now, I think we can work on that fairly safely. I think the, the way this is gonna look is that it's gonna have a tang going through, then there'll be a thin piece of white maple, and then a slightly thicker piece of this black walnut. This right here, this weird knot pattern, I'm gonna call that unusable. But when I look up here, I see some really nice clean grain, and uh, I'm feeling like right in here, this is gonna be a nice piece to get both sides of these handle scales out of. So I'll, one will be there and one will be there. They certainly We're cutting the walnut slabs for that. So I'm maybe gonna call an audible here. I found these really nice pieces of uh, oak here. So I'm sort of thinking the walnut and the oak together. And then that'll all be shaved down to look like a handle, but that's gonna be the, what the scales look like. There you go. Okay, so here's the plan. This is what we're gonna do. Something that looks kinda like this. Boom. Now that all looks pretty crazy right now, but eventually that will look better. Just a little, just a little side note here. These guys are going to be beautiful to work with. I actually had a notion of trying to build that handle out of these pieces of ironwood. I think Kevin and Susie brought these back from Jamaica for me. And they are, well, they're like iron. They're impossible to work with when you try to shave them with your chisel they just chip off like a flake of iron they're just really difficult to work with and they weigh about a ton so yeah these are going back on the shelf for something else maybe a boat anchor <clears throat> so looks like we're all set here so i got my g-flex epoxy uh the epoxy resin and the hardener got my bucket full of clamps and i got these guys laid out and we're going to mix up a batch and then we'll spread it on both of these pieces and both of those pieces and then I'll put them together and get some clamps on them. We got a little plastic down on this. Uh, yeah, I got about 45 minutes of pot time, of working time with this. So it's really good stuff to use. And it dries super strong and it stays a little flexible. So it's just the perfect thing on a, on a knife handle. Let's get started. And here's the thing with mixing epoxy. You almost cannot mix it too much. Whenever you're working with anything that has to do with two-part epoxy, a really good, complete, thorough mix is, is just the only way to go. And since this stuff has a fairly long pot life, it'll, it'll stay workable for you know 45 minutes or so. It just pays to really take a second or 12 or a minute and make sure you're really getting that mixed in well. I know, it's kind of like watching paint dry, but you're watching me mix epoxy. Maybe I'll put in something fun here. You can cut away to that. Fun fact about epoxy, it doesn't really require 
massive amounts of clamping pressure. Just a few clamps and uh, just kind of some general pressure is enough to do the job. Try not to get epoxy all over my clamps. That's always a pain. Okay, so diverting for a minute from the actual knife project. We got this little baby set up. It's all anchored down to the deck. Uh, cool little drill press. And that will be instrumental for drilling these tiny holes through here and through the scales. Uh, yeah, if you can't get those 100% straight and true through there, they're going to come out really messed up. So there you go. Yeah, there we go. So uh, job one is to clean these two inside pieces up because they have to sit nice and flush between here. So uh, all of this squeeze out junk here has to get scraped off and I'll get going on that right now. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We want to trace and get a lot of the bulk off of here and get that cut down to a little bit bigger than the size we want it and then we'll drill the holes. But first we're going to try and get rid of some of some of this excess stuff here. And so it'll have a shape something like this and this will all be ground down and look like a knife handle when we're done. But there we go. I think what I want to do now is I want to take a little bit of this out of both sides of these because that's just going to be really hard to get without dinking up that blade. I'm going to get some of that right now. Here's what we think is going to happen. And uh, I'm going to hold this guy right down here with a few rolls of few pieces of tape so it's exactly where I want it and then I'm going to put it up on the drill press and drill through all six of those spots right there and once I have that done then uh, I'll do the same on the other side and then these little pins will be able to go right through there yeah you know I'm not really a metal shop guy at all but I do have this bench grinder and what I'm going to do is going to use it to just grind a nice little round point on all of these pieces that I cut off and that'll make them slide through that handle a lot more precisely. So look at that. I've got a test fit going. I'm going to take that all apart and I'm going to slap all kinds of epoxy in there to hold that all together. And you might not see much filming with that because that epoxy, once it's on your gloves, you don't want to touch your camera for anything. Okay. Well, uh, like I said, I, I can't touch this camera when I'm doing that glue up stuff. It's just everywhere. But now, here we go. We have both of the scales. Both sides of the scales are on. All of the little pins are poking through perfectly. And uh, I think we're pretty set there. Looks good. Okay, a new day in the shop. And here she is. That's it going to cut all these little pins off. I'll cut them off flush and then I think I'll get this cut down around to the outside shape and then this will be flat on the sides and I can clamp it up and then just start carving off the rest of this knife business here. Okay, well here's what's next. Uh, I'm going to sand this guy down until it looks like a handle going to strap on the tools of ignorance and uh, get set up and so I'm going to save you a lot of that sand and Brian don't worry and uh, we'll just see what it looks like when I'm done. All right here goes. Uh, but it is a nice break from the sanding machine. This little guy is called a spoke shave and it works really good at digging into curves places like this. So uh, phase number next is uh, kind of using a knife to carve a knife. So you can see I've got much of this contoured out here pretty cleanly. And now the next thing we'll do is just using my little bushcraft knife, we'll just go through and start taking some of these edges off of here. 
Well, there you go. It's looking kind of like a pretty spiffy knife handle, if I do say so myself. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to round this part just a little bit right there. This little guy right here. And then we'll try another, another grip test here. And then I put a little water on it. And uh, look at that. The water is to make the grain raise up again. So you send it down to about 120 or so, maybe 220. Then you put a little water on it and it rises up the grain and then you sand it again. But dude, what do you think about that? That bit of water on there, so can that handle down just, just what I expected it to do. And it raised the grain on there, so everything's nice and rough. So I'll hit that again now with 220 sandpaper and then we'll probably call that handle done, move on to the next phase. Okay, so uh, next up on our hit parade is uh, boiled linseed oil on the handle. Look at how beautiful that thing looks. Oh my goodness. And uh, that's kind of the right thing for a fish knife handle for sure. It's uh, something that can be replaced easily and yeah, it's good for a working knife. If it gets a little dry, you just put more linseed oil on it. So that's our next plan. <laughs> well, Brian, I got some bad news for you here. It sort of looks like the knife project is on hold for a little bit. And furthering that bad news, you're not really my first favorite fisherman. You're my second favorite fisherman. Let me show you my first favorite fisherman. Yeah, buddy. Looks like you're number two. <laughs> okay, so uh, a new day, and uh, after a little visit with the Ospreys up on the river, world's best fishermen, I might point out, uh, we're on to phase number next of the build. So what we want to do next is we're going to make some type of a leather sheath for this guy. And so I have this somewhat thinner black leather, I think I made Leanne's purse out of this. But I, I was leaning on to this, and then I came across this little scrap here. And uh, I think we're going to do it out of this guy. And uh, I'll dye this dark brown so it'll look pretty slick in there. And it's a little bit heavier, so it's going to last a little longer and be less likely to get narfed up if it's bouncing around in the tackle box. So this is our guy. Okay, here we go. So this project starts with just a little bit of paper stock. <clears throat> and we'll use that to... Uh, make what we think is going to be the right sheath shape and then we'll cut that baby out and uh, apply it to some leather so i'm thinking i'm thinking we like this right here okay so we're gonna start with a little bit of the initial wet molding of this piece of leather and uh, the way we do that is we wrap this guy up in cellophane or plastic film here so it doesn't get all wet and yucky. Then soak this little part of the leather down here with some water. Now we'll lay this baby in there like this and with a little bit of this. There we go. So that, we're just going to let that sit for a little bit. There you go. So that's the welt. That's just going to be cemented right in there. Then the stitching will go through all of those. And then, well, you know what they say. Uh, the guy that dies with the most clamps wins. So I'm, I'm in the lead here for now. Anyway, this is just going to sit like that for an hour or two. And then I'll come back and clean up all the edges and kind of smooth them all up. It'll all get sanded and buffed and burnished, and we'll see all that in a little bit. That's this nice, good little groove in there. 
All right, welcome to a little stitching party. This little uh, apparatus here is called my stitching pony. Uh, I, I made this out of a Yakima bicycle rack and some old chunks of oak. And uh, what we're doing here is called a saddle stitch. And uh, so the idea is a needle on either end, one goes this way, one goes that way, then you pull them tight and you end up with a really nice, clean, tight little stitch that fits right down flat inside of there. So that's what we're working on today. Uh, I'll be here for a while, so carry on. So uh, the stitching went okay. What we're working on now, uh, I've put a little dampness to that, and then I just have one of these little uh, design irons here. And we're just gonna do a little, a little fancy whatnot. A little detail on there, a little tooling. Time to apply a little bit of dye to this guy, and uh, that'll kind of be it for today. Here we are. This is the last phase of preparing our knife scabbard, and what we're going to do is we're going to wet mold it just a little bit more thoroughly than it is right here. So here we go. Okay. And then we insert our knife. And then we just really work these edges down nice and tight. Oh, that's, that's gonna be perfect. Now what'll happen is that that, uh, that leather will dry out and it should shrink up and retain this nice uh, shape that we've given it here. That's the idea anyway. All right, Brian, we're about done here, buddy. So, uh, this is my final step right here. This is a little uh, beeswax and olive oil, a little concoction we make ourselves right here in our home laboratory. This wet molding sure did the job on this thing. Look at how that's, look at how solid that is, nice. Just uh, the only thing we need to do now is just take a couple of beauty shots of this guy and then uh, finish that video off and get it mailed out to you. There you go, buddy. Hope you like it. <laughs> okay, Brian. Hope you like the knife. Here's a couple little beauty shots of it. Had a real good time. Spent about a week working on that in my garage. And man, I, I just hope you're not too upset about only being the second best fisherman in the world. Eh. Love you, pal. Later.